Welcome! This tutorial will demonstrate how students create course schedules from their academic planner in BC Navigate and register with a single click. You'll find a clickable table of contents below this video that lets you skip the specific topics, along with a link to a short 5-minute overview of the process. Google Chrome is the recommended browser for utilizing BC Navigate. First, log into One Access from the Broward College homepage by clicking the Login button located here. Once logged in, click the My BC tile. The link for Navigate is located here on your My BC homepage. From the Navigate homepage, click Planner to access your academic planner. Your advisor will send you plan suggestions in Navigate. It's important to note that you must accept the plan that your advisor sends you in order for it to populate in the planner. Creating academic plans in Navigate is covered in more detail in a separate tutorial. For this tutorial, it's important to know that your academic plan is a term-by-term -term mapping of the courses you need to complete to meet the requirements of your chosen program of study. Your academic plan will be developed with guidance from your assigned academic advisor, taking into consideration factors such as whether you want to attend school full-time or part-time, work schedules, and other life commitments. As you'll see in this tutorial, Navigate lets you set preferences that will help guide the building of schedules from your academic plan. On the left side of the planner, you will see plan suggestions. This student is pursuing the Associate in Arts degree. Clicking on this link will display your degree type, number of credits required for the degree, and your catalog year. Plan Suggestions lists individual courses as well as courses grouped by subject that can be selected and dragged into terms on the right side of the planner. As we can see, this student has selected courses for the upcoming summer term. Additional terms can be added as needed by clicking the Add New Terms button. Once your academic plan has been created, you can begin creating schedules for each term that has courses planned. One thing to note is that many students, particularly new students, will have a planned autoload based on their program of study. In that case, the terms will already be populated with courses. An autoloaded plan can still be modified based on conversations between students and their advisor. It's important to note the placeholders for courses grouped by subject that are added to a plan will not get carried over to the scheduler unless a specific course is selected. So I can drag the Humanities placeholder over, and if I choose a specific course, then I'll be able to add it to the schedule for that term. The scheduler page can be accessed by clicking the View Edit Schedule button located within a term in the plan. We'll click View Edit Schedule on the summer term of this plan to begin creating a schedule. On the scheduler page, you will see buttons on the left side which you will use to set preferences, create schedules, and seek assistance if need be. Let's review them. Clicking back to my planner will take you back to the planning tool should you need to make modifications to your academic plan. My Plan Courses is the tab we're currently on showing the courses we plan to schedule. This magnifying glass icon provides an option to search for courses by reference number. You'll see a similar button here. Either button provides the same section level search option. I can type in a reference number here and the scheduler will show me that exact section. That's not the course I want, so I'm going to close out the reference number search. The Transaction History button allows you to view your transaction history, which includes all registration attempts, as well as added, dropped, and withdrawn courses in your time at Broward College. Click Go Back to return to the scheduler page. The Contact Advisor button will bring you to the Appointment Scheduler should you need to meet with your assigned advisor. The Quick Schedule button will take you to Navigate's Quick Schedule feature, which auto-selects sections of courses based on preferences you set, such as preferred times and locations. The next button, Preferences, allows you to set these preferences, so let's look at that in more detail. Within the Preferences tab, you can select your preferred campus or campuses, including BC Online. Below that, you can select Busy Times, which will place a block on your weekly calendar based on the days of the week and time frames that you select. This is done by clicking Add New Time and then selecting a day of the week and a busy time frame. This student works a part-time job Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., so let's go ahead and block off those time frames. Now those busy times have been added, and we can see that those time frames are blocked off on the calendar as denoted in blue. If she were to attempt to schedule a section of a course during that time frame, she'll get a friendly reminder that that time frame has been blocked off. 
This reminder will not prevent her from moving forward with scheduling the course. Weekly outside commitments provides a counter for different types of commitments in a student's life. Indicating the amount of hours you spend on outside commitments provides additional information that can inform conversations with your advisor about school and life balance. Once your preferences have been set, click Update Preferences here in order to save your selections. Preferences are saved. Remember that busy times are denoted by a blue block on your calendar. Navigate provides a handy key located here that defines all of the symbols used on the calendar. Take some time to familiarize yourself with these symbols. This last button on the left provides a walkthrough tour of the scheduler page should you need a refresher on what functionality is available and where tools are located. Now we're ready to pick sections of the courses we plan for the summer term. I'm going to skip the Humanities course for now and pick a section for English Composition. First we'll click the Parts button. This will display all sessions within the term. We'll choose the first six-week session of the summer term. This allows us to view section availability for this course. You'll notice three tabs. The Available tab shows sections of English Composition that work with your preferences. The Conflicting tab displays sections that conflict with your preferences. For this student, the Conflicting tab will display sections that meet during her work hours. Finally, the Full tab will display sections that are currently full. This information is updated in real time. Let's click back on the Available tab. As we scroll down, you'll see the sections of English Composition are sorted by individual campus. You can click the arrow to the right of a campus name to hide and show that campus. Looking at a particular section, the amount of available seats in that section is listed here. You can click the Refresh icon located here to refresh the seat availability. This is helpful if you've been on this page for a while and you'd like to make sure there are still seats available before deciding whether or not to select this section. Other information that is found in the Sections dialog box includes the course section's reference number, the dates of the session that the course is in for a particular term, whether the course is accelerated or not, whether it is a lecture or a lab, the days of the week and times that the course meets, the instructor's name, and the campus building and room number. If you hover your mouse over Schedule Notes, you'll see additional information about the course. Once you have located the section you want, you can select it by either dragging it over to the right and dropping it onto the calendar, or you can click the Actions button and select Add Section. Once added, you'll see the course listed at the appropriate days and times on your calendar. Toward the top of your schedule, you'll notice a helpful visual showing the length of the course within the term. The Show Timeline and Calendar button can be toggled to show and hide the timeline and calendar. Let's go ahead and repeat this process with the next planned course for the term. This time we'll click and drag the course onto the schedule. So now we have the two course sections selected and we can see a summary of what we've selected here below the calendar. As a reminder, these courses are not yet registered. We are ready to register though, which we can do with a single click. Here you'll see a register button and a pay tuition button. If you don't see these buttons, a simple browser refresh will make them appear. Once the courses are registered, you can click the pay tuition button, which will redirect you back to MyBC to make payment arrangements. Before we click the register button, we want to remind you that registration can be blocked if there is a registration hold on your account or if you haven't satisfied a prerequisite or scheduled a co-requisite. In those instances, you will see the appropriate error message. In a moment, we'll show you what those types of error messages look like. For now, let's click the register button. And the courses are now registered. A transaction summary will be displayed, showing the two courses that were registered along with a timestamp. Click Got It to clear the transaction summary. The transaction summary will be added to the Transaction History tab that we reviewed earlier. In addition to registering for courses, you can also drop and withdraw from courses from your scheduler page. In order to do that, you can scroll down past your calendar to this section called Registered Courses. This section was called Planned Courses before you hit the Register button. To drop a course, you would click the Actions button on the Course Section dialog box and select Drop. Once the drop with refund date is passed for the session that the course is in, this will say withdraw instead of drop, 
and if selected, will display a message explaining the consequences of withdrawing from a course and asking you to confirm that you wish to withdraw from the course. Since this is before the start of the summer term, we can drop the course. A message will appear asking you to confirm that you want to drop the course. Click Drop Course to complete the drop. Once the course is dropped, you'll see a transaction summary confirming the drop. Click Got It to clear the transaction summary. Now let's review what registration error messages will look like if registration is unsuccessful. This example shows a transaction in which two courses were successfully registered and one was not. The unsuccessful registration is indicated in red font. The message indicates that the course is no longer available. This error message indicates that the student is attempting to register for a fourth attempt at the course. Current policy limits students to three attempts for most courses. This error message indicates that the student lacks a prerequisite of ENC 1101 and is not eligible to enroll in ENC 1102. In some situations, like lacking a co-requisite, you can proceed with registration simply by adding the co-requisite to your schedule and then clicking the register button again. Other registration errors, such as ones indicating that you have a hold in your account, may require assistance from your assigned academic advisor. Remember that you can schedule an appointment with your advisor right from the scheduler page using the Contact Advisor button located here. There is one last thing to note regarding how your scheduler page interacts with your academic plan. Remember that we had planned art appreciation for this term that was never registered. I'm going to go ahead and schedule that course without registering it. Now I'm going to flip back over to the academic plan, and you'll notice that I can't remove the course from the plan term. If you schedule a course but do not register the course, you will not be able to remove the course from your academic plan unless you first remove the course from your schedule. So let's go back to the scheduler page. Now I'll click the Actions button and select Unschedule. Then I'll click back to my planner. And now you see that we can remove the course from the plan. Congratulations! You now know how to create a schedule from your academic plan and register your courses with one click.